bother me. But. Welcome back to Houston Life. Our next guest is one of the most sought after designers in Houston, creating high end spaces in restaurants, hotels, event venues, and retail. And today she is bringing her expertise to Houston Life to help us get that designer look at home, specifically our dining areas. Jen Braverman with Jen Design Group. Welcome to Houston Life. Thank it's so you. nice to meet you. Here's the thing as well. So Houstonians, many of them might not know your name, but if you've ever been to a dish society, to Eunice, El Segundo Swim Club, Goodnight Charlie's, White Oak Music Hall, MKT Bar at Phoenicia, Ruggles Green, you have, I know you're very modest, but your designs are all over this city. Tell us where you think this uh, acute eye for design came from, Jen. Um, I've had an interest in interior design since I was a kid. I would move my bedroom furniture around nonstop, and it was kind of weird. I just had to get that feng shui. I was like eight, like shoving beds and stuff around. And uh, <laughs> so it was always kind of in there, and I disregarded it for a while because it was so just seemed like Seemed like just, child's play, probably. Yeah, just like yeah. what I did. What it was just doing? how I felt. Being silly, right. Right, and then um, eventually it, the bug got me, and uh, I started, actually was in film production, and then I did an HGTV remodel show, and it was very extreme and intense, and after that I was like, well, if I can do this, I can do anything, so... And you're doing it. Term. You're absolutely doing it. I think everyone's goal is to have that interior design feel and designer feel in their home. At least for me, I know. I'm. How do they do it? And you have some tips for us today, so I am all ears. Yeah, um, I think the way I can translate my specific expertise with restaurants into the home is to talk about how to have a dinner party where you make your dining space feel like your favorite restaurants and okay. tips from hospitality and um, I, you know usually it's it's probably more of like the private dining room that we'll get into but um, throughout a restaurant there are all these different elements that come together so the seating is one comfortable durable seating um, we, we have made every type of seating under the sun and is that Eunice restaurant we just saw with those circular yes. tables I've sat yes. at those tables <laughs> okay so comfortable seating that really is your first tip right yes comfortable and it seems so obvious but I we've all sat in seats that are and are not comfortable and you can't gonna, enjoy anything you can't enjoy it you're gonna no. linger you're gonna enjoy your meal more when the seat is the right height it's a good fabric maybe it's stain treated at home as well for kids or people drinking wine or probably yeah. a good idea <laughs> um, and so. if we we are looking for, uh, let's say we're looking for dining chairs for the space. Are there types of fabrics that you would suggest, you would recommend, or steer away from? Um, my dining chairs are white, but they are stain treated. Okay. <laughs> nice. Which uh, is is recommended. Um, and then they're, they're contract grade fabrics, which are, um, they're stain treated, they have a certain l number of double rubs, which means they're not going to wear out and pill, and then they're also fire treated in case, you know, you knock over a candle or something. Oh so my gosh. They're, yeah, so they're <laughs> durable. In That's case so Tessa comes over and lights her hopes and dreams on fire. Absolutely, my manifestation <laughs> table. Well, you know, Derek, some people really, really, they believe in that, and I'm manifesting something as gorgeous as what you do, and I know when I take pictures and video, lighting is very important, so I want to talk about the importance of lighting, and it, everyone listen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Flattering lighting, interesting lighting. Um, I think uh, color temperature is my biggest uh, pet, pet peeve. peeve. <laughs> yeah, it's um, if it's too white and too bright, you're not going to enjoy your meal. You're going to want that low, warm light. I love a good dome pendant that keeps the light right on the table and, um, you know, kind of the rest of the room melts away. But um, if you don't have a, a low round table, then, you know, sconces, lamps. I have 10 lamps within like 10 feet in my house. I love lamps. So. Well, I love I love romantic lighting, but I also need to be able to see what I'm eating, exactly. right? So, I'm so you have to have a light source over the table. Right. Candles are great. I love this one because it's uh, clear and, you can, and the wick is um, within the oh, uh, chimney. So it's a little oil lamp candle, which is kind of perfect because it doesn't burn out and you can keep refilling it. That is beautiful. And in case anyone is handy uh, with like a light switch, you could put dimmers at home to help decrease. Because a lot of times, you know, you don't want to be blown away. You don't want to feel like you're in the spotlight at the dining table. Right. Let's talk about greenery, Jen. Uh, I love that you mentioned this point. You know I love plants. Yes. And greenery really livens up a space, literally liven livens up a space. For sure. I mean, greenery, florals, dried, fresh, it, it creates kind of a sense of arrival and, and brings life to into a space. Space. And so we work with a lot of greenery and florals and 
lar if you I just cut that branch from a tree on my way to the photo shoot and it just worked out perfectly. The, the photo we're seeing right now? <laughs> oh yeah, wow. Yeah. So you know it doesn't have to be anything fancy um, although it can be but you can and these are preserved from floriculture these uh, hanging globes. So we love um, that one of yes. our favorite spots in town. Yes. It's okay great. so whether you're cutting your neighbor's branch or your own branch to put on your dining <laughs> Get table. Get permission yeah. from your neighbor <laughs> before you cut their branch. Or the something branch. even dry. I mean these are clearly not alive but something that adds like a little softness and touchability for sure. to the room. Mm -hmm. Okay, conversation pieces. This is something uh, that a lot of people might think, well, how, what's a conversation piece? Here you have an eight ball in a nest. Yes, there's an eight ball in a nest under a cloche. I mean, of course. Why not? <laughs> it's <laughs> art. It's, it's meta. So if someone doesn't have something like this at home, Jen, what do you look for in a good conversation piece? I usually pick mine up while I'm traveling. Um, these uh, chess pieces that are at the front here that were laser cut out of books. Um, I got oh, those wow. in Oaxaca, just from a little, you know, little artisan shop. And then the cloche, of course, is from uh, well, the cloche is from a photo shoot that uh, we did, and I um, just had to have it. So see, that worked because I have 20 more questions about the <laughs> book chess pieces that worked like a charm. So interesting and unexpected pieces. Your last tip, we're out of time, is to mix and match artisan dishware so people don't need to feel like they need to purchase like the showcase showdown of plates is that for right sure. for sure <laughs> i've got some from consignment shops some from empty bowls of fundraiser for houston food bank some from uh local pottery shops and and if you just throw them all together it really makes a nice uh, arrangement. Gorgeous. It really is beautiful. Yep. It looks high end. Jen Braverman, thank you so much for stopping by. Awesome. And yes, every single photo you just saw during this segment, that is Jen's phenomenal work. If you'd like to get in touch with Jen Design Group, we have shared a link on the scene on Houston Life section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. Awesome.